Hello everyone and welcome back to another instalment of our Portuguese barn conversion series. Thank you so much to all the lovely comments that we received on the last video about our finished roof. We're so stoked that that's finally done. <laughs> Although in this video I do need to finish that ridge tile. There's always a couple more things to do but we're feeling super positive about the whole build at the moment and just really excited because it feels like spring is literally here now. It's a lovely sunny day again and spring I'm Spring has sprung. It has sprung 100% and I'm really excited to continue with the build. Oh, some stalks flying over. We're the Indie Project's B and Theo and we've been living and travelling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats, Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. There's always stuff to do on the barn, but as you know, we also live here as well as building the barn out. So that means that we've got everyday tasks that we have to do every single day. And one of them that I'm actually really excited about, <laughs> as sad as I am, is to build a compost heap because I've been using a little one behind the caravan to put all our kitchen scraps in. But I need to actually clean out the chicken coop today. There's quite a few poops in there and I've been throwing them just everywhere I can, but it'd be really great to actually have a dedicated compost pile where I can put their poop, I can put all their <laughs> scraps, just bits and pieces, and they can also rummage around in there. So I'm gonna persuade Theo to get a compost heap on the go today. So I'm sure by now you guys can tell that I'm a little bit addicted to buying tools. And when I was in the city yesterday, I actually picked up a brand new tool that I'll show you later on in the video. While I was there, I was picking up all the things that I needed for the ridge tile to complete the roof and get it completely sealed in. But before I do that, B wants me to build a compost bin. So that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. So we've got these round poles, which are staked on the bottom that are usually used for fencing. We can chop them down and utilize them. And then I'm thinking this here, which was cladding for the outhouse, we've got loads of this left over and we could use this for the actual siding of the compost bin. <laughs> there's only one thing to do and that's to laugh because there's never a dull moment living on this land. And when you drive vehicles that are from the 70s and from the 80s, there's bound to be problems. The truck won't start. I was like, oh, I'd be really easy if I drive to the bottom of the land where the wood's kept and drive it back up to where we need to actually work on it and the truck won't start. So now we gotta jump the truck with the good old Passat. The Passat's been sitting for months and months, so hopefully that starts, but it's just one of them things. I really need to get the electrics looked at or fix it myself on this truck because for some reason, the lights just stay on. Sometimes, sometimes they don't. It just makes up his own mind. I don't know if it's something to do with the rain maybe. So if we've got any electricians on here, mechanical electricians, let us know what you think it might be. I really am not sure whether the Passat is even gonna start because it's been months since we've used it on the land. So fingers crossed it does. Otherwise we're gonna have to be hauling all the wood up by hand. It's out of gear, handbrakes off. Let's go, you three, two, one. The moment of truth. Will the Passat start? Well, that's a good sign. It's got battery power. <laughs> I'm amazed. It just purrs every time, this thing. You could leave this thing for probably two years, come back and it'll be perfect. You gotta love like VWs, like our T4 just kept going and kept going and uh, yeah, our Sprinter as well, amazing vehicles. Bit of a difference from the Passat. <laughs> Everything feels so strange, like an old school in this vehicle. Like I just put my foot on the accelerator and it's just so smooth and nice, whereas this is a bit like, <laughs> it's like riding a horse. <laughs> right, let's give it a go. The truck is up and running. It's a little bit squeaky. I think it must be like a belt issue. So I need to look at that. But the joy of owning a really old vehicle. And now we need to get on with some work.
for the moment to arrive. We were initially planning on having the uh, compost heap right by the chicken coop because I really wanted the chickens to use it and I'm going to be putting a lot of their stuff in there but it didn't work out quite how we wanted it to be so we thought it's still going to be close by but a little bit further away because it's going to be a really great place for the chickens to mulch around in and also get rid of all of our scraps and this dirt pile right here is where i've been throwing their poop when i clean it out every morning but as you can see they've been going through it so i'm hoping they'll do the same thing with the new compost heap I know we always bang on about how many uses this truck has but there are limitless amount of things that you can do with this truck one of them is being able to use it as a lovely stand to measure all of these and obviously Fernando's getting involved he's obsessed with the tape measure so we heard me using it and look how excited he is anyway we're going to measure these now before we put them in the ground I want the compost bins to be about a meter square so they're probably going to go about 50 centimeters into the ground so I'm going to measure these at about 160 170 so we've got some leeway <laughs> helpful or a hindrance I don't know Theo's reversing the truck behind me so he can stand on it. Another use of the truck and use it as basically to get higher than the post so we can hammer it into the ground really nicely because the ground here can be pretty tough. <laughs> it looked like it was going to hit the pole but actually there's loads of room. Do you reckon you're going to be able to hammer it in from there? Easy. Easy. Unfortunately I don't have one of them nice, don't know what they're called, Smackers? Smackers, we're going to call it a smacker. That's the technical term here in Portugal. <laughs> I don't have a smacker, <laughs> so I've got a sledgehammer. You've got a different type of smacker. And a truck. almost finished the back of the composting bin which is good and I'm using these leftover screws that I had these are roofing screws and they got this little rubber thing on to keep the seal in the roof when you use them but they're left over I don't have any other screws on me and they're actually quite nice to use on this and the good thing about these is they're they're thicker than like a standard screw what happens here in the summer is we get such hot summers it actually just snaps the screws in half so hopefully these will manage to last a few summers but it's looking good i love it just really happy get the chainsaw fired off and start trimming it down a little Trim bit the edges then we can work on the sides and then i can use it <laughs> you're so excited i am so excited I've always wanted my own compost heap and when we lived on the narrow boat and living in a van it's kind of hard to have a compost bin going on. I've got one behind the caravan but this is going to be, this is literally a dream come true. It really is <laughs> the small and basic things in life that just make me very happy. sweating so much because I'm having to use a handsaw now. I ran out of two stroke for the chainsaw because I used it all in my dirt bike so that was clever wasn't it? So I need to go and replenish that fuel as well because you know in the last video I ran out of fuel. This video I'm running out of fuel. I need to learn my lesson. <laughs> Less time on a dirt bike. <laughs> It 
It's finished and I'm so excited. It was a quick job done, one that needed to be doing and I know I am a weirdo. I'm very, very happy and excited and my day is made. <laughs> Though I have a brand new compost heap because it means now I can use it straight away because I've got all the chicken bedding to swap out and I'm just overly excited to use it. I'm gonna show you how it looks now. And here it is, my finished compost heap, although there's no actual heap here yet. But as you can see, a lot of room. I'm really excited to put stuff in here. So now B's got the fun job of cleaning out the chicken coop, which is always fun, but at least she gets to use her brand new composting heap. Oh, brilliant. I was wondering where they were. <laughs> I'm armed and ready to clean out the chicken coop. Always wear a mask because it gets very dusty in there. There's all sorts of things flowing in the air. And because I'm asthmatic as well, it's wise. Gloves as well because there's going to be a lot of poop involved. Stop talking and get in there <laughs> and get that chicken coop spick and span. Okay, right. I'm stalling a little bit, but let's go. Look, he's waiting. <laughs> oh, I absolutely love wearing masks. Well, that's an improvement on how you look anyway. It's uh, always really <laughs> fun wearing masks and glasses. It makes me very happy. So the first thing to go in is their bedding, which is just paper. It'll break down very nicely, compost well. Oh, look at that. I'm the grand. <laughs> you got a while to go. Right. There's quite a lot of room in there. <laughs> Hola, bon tard. Mi nombre B e está estando portugués. That's the first time I've ever said anything in Portuguese on one of our videos, and that's because I've been inspired by today's sponsor, which is Rosetta Stone. Now, Rosetta Stone is a leading language company for over 25 years now, and they have a number of different languages for you to learn, and one of them is Portuguese, which is very close to my heart, as you know. We are converting our barn in Portugal, and learning the language here is really important and it'll make life so much easier to be able to effectively communicate with people in the shops, locals, in the cafes, shepherds, people that you bump into when you're on your walks. And for me, it was something that I had put off for a while because this time last year, we were actually about to ship our van to Canada and begin our journey driving around the world. So I thought, I don't need to learn Portuguese just yet. I'll learn it closer to the time. But then everything changed and we ended up in Portugal a lot sooner than we anticipated. I know the basics because we've been coming here for a long time. But for me, pronunciation is where I really do struggle. I'll translate a word, but if I don't say it correctly, there's absolutely no point in even trying to to translate it because no one knows what the hell I'm saying. <laughs> Rosetta Stone is a unique language program that teaches you a new language the way you learned your first through immersion. You learn by connecting images to words and sounds and it's designed to keep you engaged, curious and dedicated to your goal. I really enjoy using their True Accent speech recognition software. It's completely changed the game for me in regards to learning Portuguese. I actually feel confident in what I'm learning because it tells me whether it understands the words that I'm saying. So now I feel a lot more comfortable when I'm going out and saying the words that I've learned, knowing that people can actually understand me because like I said, there's no point learning a language and speaking it completely wrong. I absolutely love their True Accent software, which is just something that I've never used before. I also use it on my phone. You can use it on your tablet or a desktop as well, so that's incredibly handy. So if you set yourself a New Year's resolution or you're getting excited because hopefully the travel restrictions are going to be lifted and we can travel abroad again and you want to learn a new language, then click the link in our description for a very special offer on all of Rosetta Stone's subscriptions. I do highly recommend their lifetime and limited subscription though because you pay £179 and that's it. For life you have access to all of Rosetta Stone's languages, which I think is pretty amazing and if you really wanted to go in, you could learn every single one, but that's totally up to you. I'm definitely going to be continuing with Portuguese and maybe another one in the future when it looks like we can travel around the world again. But yeah, definitely if you've got a language to learn, click the link in our description. So here it is, my new tool that I picked up yesterday. It's a table saw and I'm super stoked to get it. I had a table saw back in the UK when we did the van build and basically we couldn't bring it 
over with us because we just ran out of space in the van, in the horse box, and in my parents' car as well, who helped us move over here. So, picked up a new one. The other one was not as good as this anyway. The old one was pretty bad. It was, yeah, <laughs> it was very ghetto. <laughs> but this looks like it should do the job. And I'm excited because what I'm going to try and do is on the last video I talked about windows So I'm actually going to try and make my own window frame I've never done anything like that before But I thought I've got so many bits of old chestnut lying around I might as well utilize them and with this I can rip them to size So this is the window that I'm going to build the window frame for and it's funny because it's so narrow And tiny <laughs> It's literally really like really small <laughs> but it should be an interesting process because like I said I've never built a window before I'm really excited to experiment with the table saw and my router should be able to do something really nice and I've got a glass cutter as well so I'm gonna cut my own glass put it in the frame and hopefully we end up with an actual usable window that isn't literally that narrow. That but actually lets light through. <laughs> I'm thinking that it probably is gonna be like the thinnest slither of gla glass by the time that I put the frame in. As you can tell, I'm a little bit of a window hoarder. I've got all sorts of different windows here. I've got big square windows. I've got these smaller, beautiful opening windows. I've got frosted glass. I've got long windows, thin windows. <laughs> I got all the windows, so if you need a window, you know where to come. But I've also got this pane of glass that fell out one of the windows and it's been, uh, been cracked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down with my glass cutter and I'm going to use that for my window frame. So now that the compost heap is completely finished, we can move on to the roof. I'm very excited because we've just got one last remaining tile to go up there, which is the ridge tile. And the day before yesterday, I had to go to the city to pick up some supplies. And as you guys probably know by now, it takes us a whole day by the time we get to the city and get back again. We really have to plan our trips wisely. And this is what I went to the city for pretty much. This is some sealant tape tape that is used for roofs and is the right color but also I had to pick up some of these four by 70 screws I got six of them I literally just need one but I ran out from the previous job and this should help me complete the roof just so this is in the middle so maybe about a foot okay ready yeah So we're having to go pretty high up here, it can be quite sketchy because we're maxing out the height of the scaffolding which means that we're going to secure the scaffolding to the building. Another handy thing about doing a barn renovation is there's the odd hole in the wall which means we can put like the ties through there and the scaffolding is secure and if the scaffolding falls it'll just take the whole building with it. Place your bets now for when you think the strap is going to come through the hole. This hole is actually also our... Um, our drainage hole for when our kitchen is fitted in the near future, not too far away. I reckon the strap is going to come through in three, two, one. You ready? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a tiny little rock in the way. <laughs> What am I pulling? The black strap. The black strap. Got it. It's really random that there's just two holes in the wall, but I haven't filled them in yet because they're so useful for tying the scaffolding. So I guess when I come down to do the pointing, once I get to that area, I'll start to fill in the holes because that means I don't have to be on top of the scaffolding. When it's just one scaffolding, it's fine. But when you get two up and you're right on the top, can be a bit scary and it gets gusty up there so yeah you know. it does get windy also it's going to be a shame when this hole is uh, covered up because it lets at sunset a really beautiful tiny bit of light through doesn't it now i've it? got a glass cutter oh my gosh you could make a miniature like uh, yeah just uh, fit it in exactly no just frame a little bit of lime and just bed it into that and then we'll get all the light pouring through i think we should try we like should try you know and if you don't like it then you can just fill it up can't you exactly Sweet. Morning stories turn the page another day's big. 
begun Silly voices Bring to life the characters you So now I'm up here at the top of the roof Like I said, I've got that one ridge tile left This is too big So basically I just need to offer it up mark it and see how much I need to cut with the angle grinder and it looks like it's going to be quite quite a lot probably going to be like half a tile and it's going to be interesting to see then how much of the wood I need to cut back and then I need to mix up some lime so it's a bit of a process actually just to complete this one last bit cut big and then I can cut it down if I need to because yeah, I don't want to waste tiles. So right now, before we actually go down and cut the tiles so we can save as many trips going up and down as we can, Theo is just marking off cutting the uh, breathable membrane and then the wood that protrudes from there because that doesn't need to be there anymore. It's a task that needs to be done, not a particularly fun one. <laughs> But he's got one of my tiny little craft knives because our old Stanley knife got completely knackered. Which is actually, it is pink and it's it's coming very handy. I never thought when I got it that it would be used for actually building our house, but here we are. This is exciting actually because this bit here has been hanging off for so long. I can't wait to see it completely done. I'll be that mountain peak That you can stand upon it Watch the world there we go, I can actually see the beam now, which is useful. Oh my son. Oh my child. I've just put the final ridge tile on. There's a little bit of a problem, and I told you I was probably gonna come into problems, and this side, you probably wouldn't notice it, not from the ground, but it's like probably about five, five mil sitting too proud it's just to do with how the last ridge tile sits and when i uh, put these tiles on the last tile usually sits on a double beam i completely forgot about that when i put this tile on and i put this at the same level as all the other tiles whereas really it should be sticking up a bit so i've literally just loosened it all up and i take these two off instead of chipping all this off it works, it's holding really well, which is nice to know. I'm just gonna cut two new tiles and then chip all this off, fresh bed of lime, and then I can work my way back up and just get it so it sits nicely because, you know, it's the last tile, it might as well look nice. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'll be able to tell that five mil. <laughs> no one else will, but I will, so I'm gonna do it. So I'm just gonna cut down this ridge beam first because this thing adds a lot of vibration. And the good thing about this thing is I can go up from underneath because I don't wanna damage this membrane. So if I go underneath, I won't damage it. And also hopefully when I reset these ones afterwards, it'll be fine because there's no vibrations. You can see how well the tiles are now secured because before when I was doing it, they were vibrating everywhere and now they just didn't move at all. So they're all completely sealed in, which is great. And when you cry, I pick you up and hold you close till it's all right. And when you smile, I come alive. I'll be that old old tree Whose branches will hold you while you swing I'll be that mountain peak That you can stand upon and so Theo's just made up a small mix We don't need a really big one but we need enough to be able to cement down I say cement, it is lime, the two tiles that we've just cut and also fill in the final hole that's just underneath the final ridge tile. I'm just installing a little bit of wood to pack up 
the beam, the ridge beam, because basically the end of the ridge tile, the, the ridge tile really should sit right into the wall and then you can mortar up to it. But obviously what we've been left with and the way the builders did it is it's outside of the building. So I just have to do some like jiggery pokery to make it work and uh, sit nice. Basically the ridge tile was coming off and pointing down a little bit. So you want it to obviously carry on at a nice level uh, point. So last thing to do with this little ridge tile is to put a screw right through the top of it. I've already drilled a hole. I've got my 70 mil screw that's going to go into the ridge beam and lock it in place. Small little pilot hole so I don't crack the beam. If I can find in my pocket. Now all the tiles are back in place, the next step is for Theo to fill in the hole of the gable with some stone and mortar. And whilst he's doing that, I'm actually gonna show you something new that we got. Bit of a double whammy in this video, I've realized. <laughs> We're showing you two new tools, but this one is purely for me. And uh, I'm pretty excited to use it actually. Here it is. This is my new tool. It is another sander because you cannot have enough sanders in your life. And this one, I chose for a specific reason. Now you might be wondering why I've added another sander to my arsenal, but there's a number of reasons. Firstly, the main reason is that we've got a lot of sanding still to do in the barn. Now we did originally sand back every single beam before it went on the roof, but when they went up on the roof, they had a lot of greasy fingerprints on them. There's been rain damage. If you go back to our videos, you can see all the drama that we had with the rain. And basically they've been sun bleached as well before the actual roof tiles went on. So they need a final sand and that's where this comes in because it's lightweight. It's a lot easier to hold up than our other mega sander that's a big belt sander that's brilliant, but so heavy. And then also we've got another little orbital sander. The problem with that is it goes obviously round and that where we need to sand the side of the beams, we don't want it to come into contact with the cladding, which is very thin and essentially eat through the cladding, which can very easily happen. So this nice and effective will go with a nice high grit. I think this one that came with it is a 120, which should be pretty good at getting off the fingerprints, the rain stains and getting it back to its nice and natural color than the sun bleached one. And then after all that is done, we can finally oil it. I'd leave Theo to it for a bit to get the final bit done. He didn't need me breathing down his neck with the camera when he's trying to figure things out, but I've come to see what he's done. Oh, wow. What a difference that is. You've done an amazing job as usual. Well done for blowing me away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stoked with how it looks. Seriously, earlier when we cut, I just needed like an hour or so to myself to work out what was going on because sometimes when you're filming, it's quite hard to step back and think of ideas of what to do and it just didn't look right at all. It just, it looked so wrong. And I, I stood over there and I was like, this is, I'm not having this. This is the last tile. This is the finishing piece to the whole building. I'm not having it wrong. So I stripped it all back, cut a new tile, made it shorter. 
and oh i just yeah it, it looks so good it now <laughs> looks like i know it's hard to believe how excited i'm getting over a ridge tile but <laughs> Our long time subscribers will know what I've been through with this roof and what I was left with. And I know I keep saying what I was left with. I'm not trying to pass the blame onto other people, but if I started this roof and did this roof again on my own, I, I no doubt I'd absolutely smash it and I'd know exactly what to do. I've learned so much in this process. And what I have been left with is I've been made to kind of think outside the box and, and do workarounds and really test my creativity and how I'm gonna do it because I really wanna restore this barn. I want this barn to look like a traditional Portuguese barn and some techniques that we're using, like the breathable membrane and not using uh, mortar on the ridge, it's a really good thing, but it looks slightly different. So with the way that I've finished the end of the ridge tiles, now it really does look like a traditional Portuguese building, which I'm stoked about. The sun is just starting to go down and for all the people who like to see the finished product, here it is. Very, very happy indeed. Well, I've got to say, finishing the day on a completed project has got to be one of the best feelings ever. That and having your first sip of coffee in the morning, actually. But it's been so good to actually get that gable done. I make out like I did all the work. It, it was obviously him. <laughs> you got a lot of sanding to do. Yeah, sanding is my domain. And uh, on that note, I hope you tune in for the next video. Uh, we look forward to seeing you then. It's going to be good. Lots more building to come.